Hi folks, we're back with another video. This one's to talk about all the sensors that are on the truck and uh, that are critical for starting and running the engine. Um, I, it's, it's, uh, there's so many, it's actually a challenge to just identify and find them all, or it was for me anyway. Now that I know where they are, it's easy, but anyway, I'll run through them all. So here's the brake, brake uh, reservoir, here's the alternator. And if you look down here, the very bottom one that I'm touching right now is a knock sensor. So if you get a code, DTC code, that points to a knock sensor, I'd check there. The one right above it is the engine coolant temperature sensor with the blue connector. Uh, this is the, sorry, this is the engine temperature sensor. And this actually is a one wire connector that goes on there. Uh, and the other part of the signal goes through the common in the block of the engine, the common in the battery. And this feeds the signal to the gauge in my dash has nothing to do with running the engine. If you unplug that or that sensor goes bad, your get your gauge your your dash gauge just doesn't work. So don't be tricked into thinking that's your engine coolant temperature sensor the way I was. It's not and uh, has nothing to do with starting the engine. Next, you've got a manifold air uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor right here. And the way you test that is you uh, you exercise your condition or you know you try to start it and it won't start or you idle it and it won't idle right and then you shut the vehicle off you unplug this sensor and try to replicate the condition and if it still exists then it's not your manifold air, uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor if the condition went away it is your map sensor the computer senses when this sensor is actually dead or missing and it will just use a default program so you can run the car without it your economy just might be a bit less next is the throttle position sensor and uh, this sensor has three wires in it. Uh, by the way, whenever I talk about sensors the, or anything that needs to have a spec for testing, um, I've tried to write it up in the comments of the uh, of the video, so or the summary or description of the video. So if you if I'm going through the videos and you go, oh, I wonder what the resistance or voltage should be, just just check those comments and hopefully I've got it there. So this throttle position sensor has it's a, it's got three wires in the connector. Um, 12 volts is applied, no, sorry, 5 volts is applied to one of the wires. One of the wires is a common, and not ground, by the way, but common to the ECM. And the third wire is a signal wire. And what it does is the ECM applies 5 volts across a variable resistor there. It's a potentiometer, and as the throttle is moved, that potentiometer swings to, to indicate a different resistance, and it causes a different voltage drop across the two terminals that do have a varying resistance and then the ECM can know what position the throttle is in. So if you have uh, an unstable idle or a really jerky, uh, you know, maybe it stalls or accelerates for no known reason, like th that throttle position sensor could be faulty and triggering the engine to give it bursts of gas. Um, next one I'll tell you about is, the, this isn't a sensor, but I'm here anyway, it's the idle air control valve. And uh, this device controls how much air gets allowed into the engine when it's idling. And if you have a really rough idle, uh, you might want to take that out and check to make sure it's not clogged up with anything and that it seems to be moving freely. One thing to note is when you pull it out, um, make sure that you, or, sorry, before you install it, make sure that you press the valve part, the movable part, into the body of the, the housing here as deeply as you can because if you don't and it's extended out, and you go to bolt it in, you can damage the valve. So basically, you're going to take this out. You need two Torx bolts to two Torx sockets to take it out. Uh, Torx Torx bits. You can take it out, do whatever check you need to do, and then take your thumbs and press the valve back into the valve body, and then reinstall it. Okay, so that's the into your idle air control valve. Next, and I'll move my light around here. <coughs> is the Right underneath the EGR valve, and it's really difficult to see, but you just have to take my word for it. There is the, there we go, this brass looking new uh, coolant temperature sensor right in there. You see that white? That's new Teflon tape I put on the sensor as I installed it. The sensor was bad on this truck, and that's one of the things that was making it run rich, so I've replaced it. New one was 40 bucks from the dealer. Um, it was actually, 30k, 30 kilo ohms higher in resistance than it should be, which was telling the uh, the truck computer 
that it was like 30 degrees Celsius colder than it really was, which was telling the computer to dump a bunch of few extra fuel in there. So that's that guy. Uh, very difficult to get at. The way I replaced it, if you have to, is I used the deep socket, and I put the socket like in front of these pulleys on, uh, on an extension and got in there. So that's how I got that one. There's one more in here that I forgot to tell you about. That's under the vehicle. And let's see if we can shine some light on this guy. It's the uh, intake air temperature sensor right there. And it's in the bottom of this mint rubber boot thing. So if you take this rubber boot thing off, make sure you don't tear that uh, wire harness off. Anyway, it's right in there. And uh, we cover the knock sensors. There are two knock sensors. They're on either side of the vehicle. I showed you the one on the driver's side. On the passenger side, it is... It is right. It's in plain view. Much easier to see on the passenger side. It's right there. Uh, I think that's all for the sensors. Also, PCV valve, permanent... Uh, no, no, what is this? Uh, something, something, crankcase ventilation. I'm thinking permanent, that's not right. I don't know. Anyway, PVC valve, uh, and this allows uh, gas to go... This allows gases to exit the, uh, the valve covers and get drawn into the intake through a vacuum line. So that valve, um, when you're running, should be, let me see, if there's vacuum on that, on that valve and you put your finger over it, you should hear it click and then when you move your finger it should come, it should click again and click and click and like if you, if you have, this is the end of the valve, click, 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 click and if you hear it moving or if you shake it and you hear it clicking around in there, then it's probably good. Let me see if that's all I have for you on the sensors. I think that's pretty well it. That's enough. Oh, there's another valve under here in this uh, huge plenum that we've got here. And it actually opens, it's closed normally, but at higher RPM, it opens, turns 90 degrees, and allows air to go from one side of the plenum into the intake ports of the other side, and then from this side of the plenum into the intake ports of the other side. And I guess that's uh, a way they increase the power output of the thing, I don't know. It has nothing to do with starting. Uh, whether it's closed or open, it won't matter, so I didn't even bother to test it because it wasn't causing any of my problems. I'm just going to check my notes to make sure there's nothing I forgot to mention this video. And I think that's it. Okay, on to the next video.